Hey, greetings from Texas. Today, we're gonna take a look at the SETME. That is C-E-T-M-E, -E. that's an acronym for uh, a Spanish Center for uh, Engineering, Mechanical, Technical kind of stuff, or their weapons development and research industry. Um, the SETME is one of my favorite rifles. Now this is a Century Arms set me. It is uh, built with original Spanish set me parts. And um, I'll kind of cover that in a little bit. Um, but it was imported, this particular rifle was imported during the first assault weapons ban. They used the original uh, set me parts, but they had to manufacture uh, the receivers and then they put them put them together in the United States and they were changed from a selective fire to semi-auto only. <clears throat> now the set me rifle was the brainchild of two German engineers who worked for Mauser during World War II. At the end of World War II they were working on the STG 45. which was an offshoot of the uh, STG-44. And you're gonna see similar uh, design features between the STG-44 or the Sturmgewehr and uh, the Setme rifle. So um, after World War II, these uh, Mauser engineers went to France briefly. They uh, didn't like it there, so they ended up in Spain and helped the, uh, helped the Spanish develop the Setme. This was uh, to answer the need for uh, NATO was developing at that time for a, a standard battlefield rifle that used the 7.62 by 51 millimeter cartridge, the standard NATO cartridge at that time. Um, incorporated in the design is a rolling delayed uh, blowback roller bearing bolt which you would find um, in the STG-45 or the famous MG-42 machine gun. This has the original um, Spanish furniture. Um, born out of the Setme, the two German engineers went back to Germany and developed the G3 rifle, the Gewehr 3 or the Gewehr Spy rifle, which became the standard uh, NATO rifle for many countries. They later became Heckler and Koch, H and K. So you're gonna see a lot of features that were on the H and K um, come out of this set me design. Now these Sentry arms, um, some were put together well, some were not. I had two, one was a lemon. I got rid of that, but I kept this one. This one's a pretty good uh, performer, but I'm mostly intrigued uh, by the hi historical significance of the rifle. Variations of the Setme and the G3 are the uh, PTR-91, HK-91, uh, HK-93. Um, Century Arms now has a better version, their own version of the Setme. I think it's the Setme 3 which is available today. Okay, so this is a uh, gas operated, delayed blowback, shoulder fired weapon. It has a magazine capacity of 20 rounds. I will demonstrate operating and shooting the set me later um, because of YouTube guidelines um, about showing the insertion of high capacity magazines, which are 30 rounds or more um, I'm just going to block it out just so I don't uh, get any grief because we all know that um, inserting, showing, or depicting the insertion of 30 round magazines are going to incite mass shootings and violence. These magazines are interchangeable with the uh, G3. Here we have the standard uh, NATO cleaning kit that you can. I don't know if you can still get them. Had this for quite a while. 
Um, these are the magazines available for the G3 or the Set Me. Um, these are steel and these are lighter weight aluminum. And you can kind of see the difference of the design and also the rust and weight are kind of an indicator. Here's some G3 furniture that you can get. I don't know where my forearm is, but it, it looks exactly like the forearm here, except it's just this green plastic. And if you want to have a look alike G3, um, you know, you could play around with this. I'm gonna show you some of the features of uh, the Set Me rifle and um, some of the functions here. Uh, one of the things is that the magazine release is quite quite distance from your shooting finger. I, I usually come up and use my middle finger. You have an indicator here for fire and safe. And here's the safety lever. Okay, fire, safe. And there's a little indent that points to the numbers. The trigger has qu quite a long pull. It's not that great. Um, the rear sight, this is a four position leaf sight, a leaf and peep sight. So it'll rotate. The leaf sight's good up to 100 meters. You flip it up for 200, 300, and 400. The front sight is a post. This rear sight on this model is not adjustable. To adjust elevation and windage, you need to have a tool which you insert in the top of the front sight hood and rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise. So for elevation and um, depression, you're gonna have to screw that front sight post down or up. Windage is achieved, this post is actually off center on top of the, the sight post or a sight um, mechanism. So when you turn it, it rotates around. So you have to kind of, if you need to adjust for windage, move that accordingly. So I don't know if that makes sense to you. Um, the bayonet lug is missing. There is, um, and you can buy them. It's just, it has a little, um, I don't know how to describe it, like a post that when you s slide the bayonet, it attaches uh, to the post that's on the end of the um, housing there. This is the standard um, flash suppressor that came with it. Now the weapon is operated. Okay, this is a 20 round magazine, YouTube. By inserting the magazine into the magazine well, and then the shooter will take the cocking lever, pull it back and release it. It does not have a bolt hold open feature, nor does it have um, a dust cover over this. The other way to facilitate loading is after you're empty, you pull this back and lock it up, reinsert a new magazine, and you can do what's called the HK slap. You can just knock it down like that. But for reloading, generally, um, when you run empty, you're going to pull it back, lock it back, remove the magazine, insert the new magazine, and do the HK slap. That's kind of all I could think of for now. Um, it's, it's pretty heavy. I don't know the exact weight, um, but it, it feels like a rifle. The sling system is similar to the old uh, German Mauser rifles. As a matter of fact, this is a German Mauser sling, reproduction sling. Takedown is uh, fairly simple. All you need is a bullet. You push these two pins through 
and that separates uh, the stock and you'll have this configuration. The trigger housing, this section here just drops out and then you can pull, pull the bolt out, but I'm not gonna do that. It's fun to shoot. So let me go ahead and we'll take you out over here to the range and I'll shoot it for you. You can see how it works. Um, it does have a fluted chamber. So what happens if you're a reloader and you're looking at getting one of these, it can cause damage to the casing. I'll show you that. Um, after I fire a few rounds, I'll show you what it does uh, to the expended casings. All right, without further ado, let's head over to the range. All right, so here's what I was talking about with what the uh, set me does to the brass with that fluted chamber. To the right is a uh, 5.56 uh, brass, expended brass. And you can see the fluting and the uh, damage to the neck of the... Um, cartridge casing. Um, one thing I forgot to mention when loading the set me, you want to bring the, the bolt and lock it back um, with a full magazine. Sometimes it's hard to get the magazine to seat with the bolt forward. So we have our bolt back and we're going to load it. Okay, we have our eyes and ears. Um, the safety, a word on the safety is kind of counterintuitive. You have to flip it up and there's a long degree of travel here. Run safe, run fire. Make sure we got the right sight here. We have our leaf sight up. Okay, there you go. I hope you enjoyed the, the look at the set me. It's a fun rifle to shoot. Packs a lot of punch. I appreciate you stopping by and thanks for watching.